welcome, welcome to day two, last session of the conference, Online Connecting Online Conference. And here we have the beautiful Ed Miller. We were expecting Dr. Nelly. I don't know where she is. But anyway, not to worry, she'll be here any minute. I'll be in the background if anyone needs anything. And I'll be co-hosting today, giving Dr. Nelly a rest, but she should still be coming in quite soon. So write in the chat box where you're from. And Blood Miller, can you please speak so we can hear your mic if it's on? Okay, uh, here I am. Hello, hello. Do you hear me? Yes, yeah, working good. Fine. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to leave you to take over and I'll be here in the background. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's a, it's a nice representation of the conference. 24 people. Amazing. Thank you, everybody, for um, JC. There are people from Italy, from Romania, from, uh, again, Italy, Italy, and Egypt. Wonderful. From New York. Hello, New York. I'm from New York State, uh, Goshen, New York. All right, um, Australia, wonderful. <laughs> oh, nice, Nils, it was wonderful to see um, some panel, panel of wonderful. So, thank you very much for uh, being with me today. And uh, so I am a professor at Mount St. Mary College, Newburg, New York, and uh, I was born in Russia and uh, lived all my life uh, in Russia, uh, and in 2000, I came to the United States and uh, am still here, and I found my Venezuela wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Um, so, and um, I, as I always say, oh, it's Thomas. All right, Thomas. Hi, Tom. <laughs> Wonderful. See, uh, see new familiar faces, familiar names, and uh, handwriting, kind of. Uh, so. Uh, as uh, I usually say that uh, when I came to the United States and to teach in a new environment, to teach uh, to American students was um, a challenge uh, because uh, for different reasons. Because first of all, I came from a very prestigious school, School of Foreign Languages, where I was teaching English and I was Dean of School of Foreign Languages, and usually um, the selection of students is very um, challenging, and uh, only best students are um, selected to the School of Foreign Languages. It was enjoyable to work with students who were devoted to studying. And then I was supervising PhD dissertations. I worked with master students. So I had I had a quite high level of expectations to students, and when I came to the United States, I were I am teaching at a, a liberal arts college that uh, gets all students, uh, different students, not just selective students, and and the expectations from the teachers are just I pay money and you teach. Um, and I try to teach to the high levels, and um, there were there were problems. Students are not were not used to uh, the high bar, so it was difficult. Besides that, I was a new teacher, and of course um, the com students were complaining the the, the accent, the this and that, but. Uh, what happened is, why I'm telling this story is, I uh, decided, I decided to use technology in teaching. And this actually uh, helped me, is it next? 
<laughs> and uh, so what it helped me uh, really um, reach out to students and reach everybody and so when students were complaining, oh, you know, I didn't understand or something, I would say, okay, everything now is online, everything is on the website or on when we started using management system, learning management system, everything is on Moodle and computer does not have an accent, so you can read and just you be ready. But uh, so it, it was a long way to reach students and uh, to make them enjoy learning and enjoy learning on their own, not just for the teacher, but for themselves. And besides, I teach for educational program, training teachers. So, and the expectation was, give me the lecture, tell me what to do, and I will do it, and you just give me a test, and I will be okay. But, <laughs> thank you, great, Maria. Um, but, uh, there were different um, situations, different ways of teaching, and what I came um, up with, I started engaging students in a different project and um, finding ways how to teach the same content, but authentically, and also uh, with um, interesting and interesting uh, authentic tasks and environment. So that's and besides, uh, with the development evolution of technology, world is available to you. World becomes small, and um, that's why. Uh, right now, you are all here in this room, and you can make connections and connect your classrooms with each other. That's why it's a very important talk. Um, and that's how it happened. Uh, uh, being online, being on um, different networks, I learned a lot of people, uh, colleagues, and through uh, IT for All, through running well, uh, model for teachers workshops together with Nelly. I've learned so many people and it helped me open the doors of my classroom and not only four walls, but open my classroom to um, global world and the global projects. So I have, I had several projects and that's, I wanted to share with you, uh, what, um, what those projects were and how these projects have impacted my students. So, um, one of the projects was Snow, Snowblock CT Net City, Snowblock project uh, that I did with Israel, China, um, and um, uh, United States. Um, right aid project uh, that started um, by the uh, Finnish professor and then Nelly and I, we picked it up and connected other classrooms from Germany, France, uh, Japan, and uh, China. So all these, uh, these years I had projects. So this, for example, International Writing Exchange Project, uh, Ruth Wilmy, started this project in 1993 as a college professor. She, she, is, um, she was teaching English at the university, uh, engineering university. And so she started teaching in, uh, through emails. She, she started engaging uh, students in communication with other colleges and other students uh, on different topics. And uh, so she just retired recently, and I th recently 2010, I think. And since 2015, Nelly uh, hosted, uh, welcomed, and welcomed the uh, writing exchange project in a Moodle IT for All 
And since then, um, classrooms and professors and teachers who were communicating, who were connecting with other classrooms, they uh, now uh, are hosted and um, welcomed at IT for All. So that was one of the projects. And uh, my students uh, from Teaching with Technology class participated with Japan. I, I remember uh, Cynthia Edwards, uh, so she was teaching sometimes. She, she had a small group of students and um, Japanese girls. It was very uh, interesting and enlightening and authentic to learn about the culture through these communications. My students um from teaching it was a graduate class and students were amazed how shy those girls were and how they were opening up uh, from meeting to meeting they were warming up and opening up and uh, even if in some communication I had only one male student in class and they, the girls were asking questions if he had a girlfriend so it was um, it was uh, interesting uh, being shy and uh, <clears throat> being closed, but through this uh, warmness and interaction and um, feeling uh, being more connected, so students were uh, open up to more personal questions. So uh, that was one of um, the projects. Uh, that I did several times. In 2009 and 10, in December of 2009, um, Gail, Gail Springman, uh, found me online on, um, on, a, on, I, um, LinkedIn, and she wrote me a message asking, uh, if I would be interested to, uh, join, uh, this uh, program, Snowblog Net City, CT Net City project, lo uh, language connections project. Um, and uh, she had kind of vague idea what, um, how it can be. She did it with among the school children. And I had a college classroom. So, and during December, during January, this um, break time, so we designed um, a concept. I designed a conceptual framework for the course because my students were learning about different technologies and how to develop uh, literacy skills. Uh, it was literacy and technology course. And, <clears throat> and so we designed weekly assignments uh, and how my students would be learning and using technology promoting literacy skills. So, and our, this project, uh, we, uh, we had other participants from the Ukraine and from China. And so we had, um, we used different platforms, um, and I was running usually also using with IQ, I was uh, using, um, Every week, during the week, students will be connected. We used, we used, um, Ning. It was free. It was available. And what was, what was wonderful about Ning was, is it had a discussion forum. It had, um, uh, wiki possibilities. It was allowed, it allowed to upload videos and pictures. And so we, uh, it was our home. So we posted all our assignments. Um, students were interested. We were posting every week. We were posting assignments for um, writing about topics and uh, introduction or uh, it was, um, there were different topics. And also students were assigned to read a book. It was a book about um, Curious Rat. Um, I think it was Gail's um, son wrote this interesting, intriguing story about a rat who uh, what 
lived um, in the city and how she and every every week we will give them part of the story and then encourage students to come up with the continuation of the story and uh, so it was engaging and students were doing these assignments really with uh, interest motivation intriguing and interesting so and these are the tools that we were using um, this technology we used extra normal this was free now it's I think it's Plotagon it's called we used also uh, Voki we used um, many uh, web tools that um, Plotagon there is a um, yes extra normal was a wonderful uh, program that um, that allowed students create dialogues and then if you it, it, the, the motto of this program was if you can type you can create movies because after students type they have to come up with this uh, plot and they type it in and then it converts into the conversation they could select the background Plotagon is now uh, has the same features the same Voki you can create um, not a dialogue but it can be monologue but um, that's what they were doing and students were creating uh, their um, greetings they created dialogues and they sh were show sharing with uh, students so these were uh, one of the Ukrainian groups and so students were posting their introductions and their pictures so that we would uh, associate names with uh, with um, the names with the faces. So I used um, a voice thread. If you see this here, it's a voice thread. And uh, so we created a little slideshow and students uh, created, created the, uh, the greetings and we also created uh, for different topics we created slides on on the topics and students were engaging inviting <coughs> other students from other groups from other countries to contribute to the topics of uh, of the conversations that we had um, so uh, Gal uh, also um, was greeting students and uh, what she also did, she um, arranged um, uh, an exhibit in uh, Tel Aviv uh, and she announced a com competition of um, between the groups that participated. Um, we uh, announced a competition of 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 the red story so and every group uh had to uh make up a story about uh, about the character and present uh submit to the uh, judges and we were also featured at that exhibit in tel aviv um and so these are uh, again we used other topics and so I don't have all the pictures but um, there were uh, interesting uh, competitions so um, American students used Mickey Mouse um, uh, Ukraine it turned out to, that they had also a national character uh, mouse and they all were um, they used and they uh, made a story and what also they they were actually were the winners they created a story and they uh, staged it so if American students they just um, posted uh, a, a video about uh, a Mickey Mouse or collage so um, a Ukrainian student did it uh, like a theater so they were in the room and they were uh, telling stories or parts of the stories in turn so they not only did it um, uh, just writing or uh, adding the captions but they were also made a real uh, video uh, about the, their their 
their character and uh, they were the winners of this competition. So, and um, based on that, um, I continued uh, engaging students in uh, different uh, global projects. One of the projects was, before I, I speak about 2012 project, It's a Small World uh, with Russia, I also participated in flat classroom with Vicky Davis and Julie, um, um, uh, Lindsay, uh, Julie Linson, uh, Lindsay. Uh, so it, it was a, a fascinating project with 500 students. And what happened is, um, Ju uh, Vicky and uh, Julie invited, uh, me and my class to be judges. And it's, it's interesting that my, my course was about Web 2.0. And they were, they, you know that uh, Vicky and uh, Julie, they wrote a book based on Friedman's book, uh, The World is Flat. They uh, adjusted this, this book to the topics of uh, Web 2.0. And so all students, uh, classroom, um, classrooms were participating in this project um, and learning about the tools through the project. It, it was uh, it's learning by doing that it was. So each classroom had to, uh, and they were using wiki spaces. And students uh, from classrooms, high schools and elementary schools, and they were meeting in uh, uh, wiki spaces uh, and they were interacting, they were discussing the plot. Each group, each classroom uh, got the topics, and they were all topics that I was teaching in class, Web 2.0, um, communication tools, um, uh, the um, copyright, or all these topics that are important in uh, in, in interaction, they were the topics of that project, uh, flat classroom. And so my students were learning about this, uh, helping students create their, and so each classroom, they were first learning, they were writing, uh, designing plots, and then they had to create videos. They, they were creating videos on the topics, and that's where the competition was between the classrooms and my, my students, my college um, teacher candidates. They were judges, and they were, uh, they had to select best projects. It was really engaging, enlightening, and it was uh, it was current because the students were learning about technology through technology, and they were they were helping students. They were again it was literacy because they were helping uh, students uh, write, and they were also reading. They were writing. They were editing their helping edit their work, and and then they were. Judging, they were. It was a high level of understanding of the topic and also understanding of the value of technology. So, in in 2012, uh, one of my colleagues from Russia. Oops, what happened? Um, from Russia, Tatiana Ivushkina. Uh, so she, um, when I was Dean of School of Foreign Languages, she was my colleague from Volgograd, but then she moved to Moscow and she is now teaching at the, um, at the, uh, Univers um, Institute of International uh, Relationships. And she was teaching for diplomats, um, social workers, and journalists. So and she Call, uh, she emailed me and she asked, Ludmila, I really, I teach English and this is the uh, first, second year student and they need, uh, they need, uh, some, have some kind of authentic experience of interacting with native speakers. So, but I was teaching methods of social studies. 
So how can, and I said, well, you know, uh, I'm not teaching language, I'm teaching content, I'm teaching social studies. Let's find some ways how to connect, how to make it meaningful for both sides. Uh, of course, for your students, it's important to communicate, but for my students, they have to learn about cultures, uh, social work, they, citizenship, econ economics, and and um, government and everything. So, so we came up with the idea uh, to connect our students. So this is uh, Tatiana's class. This is my colleague in the uh, left uh, hand corner. This is Dr. Ibushkina. And these are the students of Tatiana's class. And uh, I hope that the next slide is about uh, my students. It's a little bit slow. And these are my students. These are my students, teacher candidates from um, social studies methods class. And what happened is, so we, and, and the time difference was also on the way because it, it was eight hours different. So what happened is that my class was at 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock uh, during the day. And the students, Russian students, had to wait for us, I think, for, for something hours uh, to, to start communicating. So what we were doing, we, during the week, students will, uh, I, I would create PowerPoint presentation on Google Docs, which really is a connection. Students were connecting with each other, and I would give the topics and create slides for every student. And they were contributing to the topics of um, weekly topics. We had weekly topics. And then on uh, on the day, uh, and I was teaching Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and on Friday we would meet uh, using Skype. I tried uh, to meet uh, with the group through WizIQ, but the connection was so poor that um, that it didn't work. So we chose Skype, and it was uh, much more helpful. So these are uh, so the first week was um, introduction, and we uh, each group contributed and created their uh, greetings and uh, in information about themselves or slides about themselves. Then we had these um, Russian Americans in the eyes, in the eyes of each other, and uh, so that um, they were all learning about. Then we had America. Uh, then we had elections. It was it happened so that we we had elections, and Russia at that point had elections. Uh, Putin, and so we created there were slides, and that was. My students from social studies class, they were learning about election system, not only in, the, in their own country, but they also in the Russia, how election happens, how they select candidates. And they asked these uh, amazing questions to each other, how they support or, um, and there were some controversial questions. It was really amazing. And you you cannot create it from the book or just in the closed classroom. Uh, it 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 really brings the world to um, to to your classroom when you do this. My favorite topic was about um, American and Russian values, uh, and I called it um, American Dream and Russian Soul. It was, and I used, uh, it just, my, my art become theory because I remember how, uh, students, um, from the United States, they were speaking about American dream and what it means and how the, everything is changed and, uh, students, Russian students didn't know that American students work hard. So nobody, uh, was you know, the education, first of all, is not free, like it was, it used to be in Russia. Second of all, each student had loans for cars, they had to pay for an apartment, and so it was really eye-opening for both sides. It was, 
it was really amazing. And uh, I remember uh, students were, um, and the Russian students were uh, reciting uh, poems about Russian soul and uh, how spiritual Russian culture is. And so it was uh, really an amazing conversation and opening each other. It really, it really brings us together, right? Um, it, it absolutely. Um, and and these are and then when the end uh, when it was the uh, the end of the semester and we had a farewell and students wrote their farewell greetings and and uh, uh, Russian students even wrote uh, uh, they sang a song. <laughs> and they used, uh, they made up a song um, using uh, Moscow Nights. It was, it was uh, very touching. And <laughs> thank you, Nash. <laughs> and uh, it was, it was really uh, wonderful. And in the end, uh, they exchanged, they exchanged. Um, they exchanged the um, ad address, ad addresses and they, they stayed connected for some time. And it was interesting because uh, most of the students, American students, never had, uh, never were exposed to Russian culture. And <laughs> yes, Halina, you know. Yes, Lishni Sadu Dajashora he. So I see there are Russian names here. Maybe they will join me in singing this song, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so and um, so they. It was the first time they were exposed to American culture, to Russian culture, and Amer and the Russian students. They also opened eyes to so many phenomena they didn't know about. So um, and. This year it was so I I did a lot of projects uh, like this um, and um, I used Skype a lot in uh, in uh, many of my classes and some of them were uh, for example one of the um, one of the projects was also on economics I did um, I did a project on Biz World. Uh, and my students uh, from my, again, social studies class, they were teaching um, economics projects to an uh, entrepreneurship to the, uh, to several grades. Uh, I had three classes at, that year. And students were teaching to the second grade, fourth grade, and seventh and eighth grade. Um, and what we did, we created company in those uh, classrooms, and uh, so we had guests. We had also uh, classrooms from other uh, states of the United uh, United States of America, and so we were kind of competing. So we had a company that was for second grade. They were making bracelets, friendship bracelets. Uh, fourth grade, they were creating movies, and they were they they created a company on movies, and um, the um, the upper grades, they were learning about investment and investment companies, how market works, stocks and ex stock exchange and everything. I remember I was a, a venture, uh, venture capitalist, so they were coming to me borrowing money, not borrowing, asking for money and proving uh, um, that their projects or movies or companies that they created were worthwhile and were while opening and supporting. So, and then through, again, um, the company that issued that project, Bizworld project, that is if you go to foundation, Bizworld, um, foundation dot org, so they provide materials, they provide uh, su the supplies, and uh, so we had our money, these bucks, we had uh, uh, many things from the company um, and uh, 
ledgers. Students were making uh, calculations of uh, all the expenses they had. They had to write applications for jobs. So the company to judge, so we had our sessions through Skype. And it was amazing. And when students were, in the end, all the gr three groups of uh, college students and students from the school were presenting the results of the uh, of the companies, um, the, the foundation, Biswell Foundation through Skype, they were judging and also rewarding students. We, we got some rewards from the company. They sent us stickers and pencils and it was um, wonderful. So, and this year I also engaged students in a project. It was called, um, by the way, it was, I think it was in April. That was, uh, there is um, annually the, they do uh, Skype in the classroom. Um, it was the whole week. And classrooms from all over the world were connecting uh, with other classrooms. So I had I was teaching social studies methods, and also I was teaching science methods. So both classrooms we were connecting with the classrooms from Kansas, and I was so lucky. So I I found this teacher on uh, on on this on Skype. Uh, through Skype in the classroom uh, network. And <clears throat> so this teacher, she's a teacher of also science and social studies, but she's a teaching in sixth grade and eighth grade, Andrea. And um, she was just an inspiration. So I was so lucky because, uh, well, students always, always see me because I'm excited about technology. I engage them in using technology. But for them to see a school uh, classroom teacher who is passionate about your student, her students, about projects that they did, and um, so what happened is, um, what what was this project about? It was a mystery um, project, um, mystery biomes, and also uh, so it's it's also social. So from the science point of view, students were discussing biomes. And what happened is each classroom uh, on both sides of the um, United States, from Kansas and from the New York State, so they didn't know. I didn't tell my students where this classroom was, and the teacher didn't tell where we were. But they had to ask questions to each other, to each classroom, and to find out what biome they live in. So it was so exciting. and. Um, so they, they, it, it took a while for every classroom to figure it out. And they figured it out and then they started interacting with each other, asking. And uh, one of the questions was, do you have tornadoes? And students from Kansas said, yes. And then they started asking questions, so what do you do when it happens? And, and students informed my, my classroom that they have special base. So every house in Kansas has the basement where they hide from uh, from the disasters. So, and then they ask a different question. But in the end, uh, also the teacher um, also shared moment, metacognitive moment, what she does with the with the students of her classroom. So they were analyzing. Uh, analyzing uh, why they didn't guess quickly enough about the bio, what kind of questions they were asking, what questions they liked, what questions they didn't like. What uh, it was just just an amazing experience. And again, I keep telling my students that uh, you have to have because it's science. You really have to bring students to high level of thinking, metacognition. Why you think this way? You think uh, how you make up? How can you come to conclusion? How you come to um, solution? So you have to see this process. And they saw uh, in real life what that teacher was doing. And after that, and also if you uh, let me see if I have another 
um, I also had a video where, yes, this is the, uh, I don't know if it's working. Let me find on my, we still have time. I have a video um, that was amazing how proud these kids were. They were sharing what they were doing with their teacher in their classroom. So I will share with you right now. Guys, do we, uh, let me see if I, okay. I will bring the, the link. Uh, it's just, it was just amazing. Uh, <clears throat> stop it and I will share, uh, what is the, what is media? Okay, media. And I'm sorry, it will be uh, a little bit shaky because I was doing it. I didn't expect to write, but it was so good that I videotape it <laughs> with my camera and I post it. So let's, let's view a few minutes and see what this classroom has to share. You remember what we did in sixth grade mm -hmm. with our water project? I oh, okay. I remember. All right. So for science, I'm gonna have um, I'm gonna have Kara come up and talk a little bit about when they were in sixth grade, how um, we use Skype as a bouncing off point to do a big science project um, that really affected the world. Yeah. I want to do something. You guys can share together. Okay. So. A few years ago, when I was in, or when we were in sixth grade, we did something called Project Project Link, which partnered with us here in Kansas, uh, somewhere in Greece, and uh, Nairobi? Nairobi, Nairobi, Africa, because over in Africa they didn't have a lot of clean drinking water. So we were doing a project to try to get them. Uh, cheap, inexpensive, and easy to make water filters over there. So we were constructing here out of pretty much rudimentary materials to make these water filters that kids over there our age would be able to do and filter the water so it's cleaner and then it'd be able to drink it. And we were able to Skype with some of the people in Greece and some of the people in Africa and see who we were actually partnering with and who we were helping. So we used Skype in that manner to uh, expand our horizons and see how big of a scale this project was. Absolutely. And so, okay. What about the one where we skyped a girl and uh, she showed us like what materials do you use? Remember we, we, we use like the buckets and water bottles and things and we tested. Oh, when, when we... Uh, We're testing the water to see if it was that, oh, was that when we had the, uh, I, I don't know, uh, we'll have to talk about that a little bit more, because I'm not sure, if, I think that's kind of what she was talking about. Okay. Yeah. So, um, um, so you can see I that. I would like to stop it know, here. Us, that was so. You see, you, you cannot, again, you cannot explain it. You cannot describe it. But kids are saying how proud they were where they did this project together with a student. It, it, uh, it was uh, an amazing experience. And um, so you see that in the end, uh, they, they, give, they gave to each other high fives. <laughs> and my students, uh, it, it, uh, it was really, um, I, um, I shared some of the, I, uh, right now, this is slide, uh, with a few, um, blogs. My students write blogs and they all really, uh, appreciated this experience. They, when they first came to class, because I did it as a surprise, I didn't, uh, so they came to class and I turned it on. I uh, pulled up with Skype and they said today we have a <laughs> meeting with the with the classroom and they at first they didn't didn't know what to expect and 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 then in the end they didn't want to stop and um this science class they came 
uh, to my classroom um, this year for a different course, but they said, Dr. Smirnoff, can can we do something something new <laughs> with Skype or something else? So uh, you are welcome to give me ideas. Uh, we all can be connected and connect our classrooms and bring our world together and um that's what actually uh, that's what our um world is needs now nowadays we need warmth we need to know each other to become to become aware of our cultures about uh, our traditions about our values and <laughs> so um that that's um i think uh well i wanted to read you some but uh, um so what some of them after lesson um like let me read a few words from the uh, blog one important thing um the teacher kept saying was that as teacher we need to create lessons that students will Remember, it is so important that students are involved with their learning experience and it should be memorable and enjoyable for the students. After the lesson, the teacher showed us how she would normally wrap up a lesson as we were not there. So they uh, gathered together and talked about the overall lesson. I think this was also good for us to... Uh, this, because observe because we got to see how another teacher handled this and effectively closed the lesson. So it's just um, I think there are a lot of benefits to to this mystery Skype uh, experience. One of the students in the class explained so they appreciated that story about the projects we did uh, in Greece and Nairobi. So. Um, I, these are the links, by the way, and maybe Nelly will post my Google Docs presentation, and these are clickable links, and, uh, yeah, so Galina, Halina says that she has still connections with the Ukrainian students, um, so the, uh, these are, um, blog reflections of students saying how much it was um, impacted their understanding of uh, not just the topic, but the, the value of technology and connection online. You can connect now with anybody. In another class, one of my students, they were teaching um, about rocks. And I told them, you have Facebook, you have Internet. Look for the uh, for the author's uh, site website and invite your uh, the author to your classroom through Skype. You will see they will be happy to come to your class for free because they are interested. They they are they they will appreciate you connecting. And one of my students out of twenty three, one of the students was brave enough to do that. And she connected, and the teacher, the author of the book about rocks, wrote a letter to the students of the class. What, again, what these students will remember forever. The author of the book that they were reading wrote a letter, and then she challenged them with other questions. <laughs> so, um, I guess um, Tom reminds that it is uh, the time to wrap it up. So, I... Uh, finish up and uh, thank you everybody. So, and the, everything is available, everything is possible nowadays with technology. So, good luck to the end of the um, conference. Thank you, thank you, Sibyl. <laughs> Thank you, Ludmilla. Thank you, everyone, for being fabulous attendees. Thank you for being a great presenter and giving us plenty of ideas. I noticed that a lot of the um, attendees are saying that they've learned so much from you today.
So that's really yeah. exciting. Before we just, I just increased the class a little bit because it's the last run, and just in case there was someone that wanted to ask a particular question, I'm just looking to see someone wrote something in Italian. Um, yes, Elisa, I apologise. I think that link that Dr. Nelly gave me only goes to Facebook, so um, I will yeah. find it and uh, share it, but. However, most of you probably already have that document. Thanks a lot. Anyway, um, just quickly, are there any questions for Ludmilla while we still have her online? So this and is the uh, link to the presentation. Yes, this is the link to presentation and uh, people can look and there are links there. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, so are there any questions for Ludmilla before she leaves us and before I close the class? No? Okay, <laughs> copy of today's chat with all the links will be available in the forum in the online sessions and I'll have those ready in the next 10-15 minutes, the time it takes to put them together. And Dr Nelly was not able to come and join us at this very last session, but she wishes everyone well and she hopes and looks forward to seeing everyone here tomorrow. So tomorrow is the last and final day, another wonderful day of online sessions. I think my session is actually the first one, which is midnight for me. It's been very hard from Australia, but anyway, we've pulled it off. Thank you, everyone. Copy the chat if you Bye. want. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good luck, Nick. Thank you, Ludmilla.